I went back and played Warzone 1 after nearly four months of playing Warzone 2, and the experience of playing it was not at all what I expected. A lot of people don't know that Warzone 1 is actually still playable to this day through the Modern Warfare 19 launcher. However, only Caldera Battle Royale is playable. Rebirth Island, Fortune's Keep, and even Plunder have all been removed from the game since November 16th, 2022, and are likely to never return again. What's most ironic about this is that near the end of Warzone 1's life cycle, it seemed like a majority of the Call of Duty community was playing the resurgence game modes of Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep, and not nearly as many were playing the big map of Caldera. Caldera has gotten a lot of hate since its release, however, I think for the wrong reasons. When Caldera released back in 2021, the game was nearly unplayable for most console players. The map wouldn't load, textures looked like Play-Doh, and it was just not an enjoyable experience for a large part of the community. So they turned to Rebirth Island, and a lot of people fell in love with this hybrid team deathmatch and battle royale-esque mode, which was fast-paced but forgiving because of its respawn mechanic. Months later, after Caldera's release, a lot of changes were made to it. They fixed the bugs and glitches, decreased the amount of trees or foliage around the map to help with visibility, added fast travel train stations, and added lots of redeploy balloons which allowed players to travel around the map quickly and always stay in constant action. In the last few months of Warzone 1, Caldera was one of the fastest paced battle royales that gaming had ever seen, but a lot of people just never gave it a second chance because of its initial issues. And to be honest, I was one of those people. I exclusively played Resurgence on the small maps and never touched Caldera again. When Warzone 2 released in November of 2022, the Battle Royale map Almazra was the only playable map. There were no resurgence modes. Honestly, this map is beautiful. The graphics on the new engine look great, and there's a lot of great POIs and unique different areas to have gunfights in. But everything that made Caldera one of the fastest and most action-packed Battle Royales had vanished. The most noticeable was the movement. This is an example of Warzone 1 movement. Things like slide canceling and bunny hopping are impossible to do in Warzone 2, and the overall movement speeds are slower. Even the time it takes to aim your gun is significantly slower. And here's what a good movement clip in Warzone 2 looks like. Combine these changes with a significantly faster time to kill, meaning it only takes a few bullets to down an enemy, and that has led to a very different playstyle than what we are used to seeing in Warzone 1. One that is a lot slower, tactical, and often involves holding angles and playing purely for positioning. Now, some people love this change. It's more realistic, it rewards players who to play the game with their brain first and punishes ultra aggressive players who look to push every possible enemy. This change has been really beneficial to people who simply don't have the time to play the game a lot since they don't have to learn various techniques on how to break cameras or have cracked out movement. It comes down to just good positioning and point and shoot. But regardless of how you feel about these changes, what's clear about Warzone 2 was that it was not meant to be a replica of Warzone 1 with just a few new changes, but instead a completely different style of game. Game. And the result of that means a lot of people who fell in love with the fast paced gameplay of Warzone 1 haven't enjoyed the polar opposite experience that they received with Warzone 2. And looking at total player counts and how Warzone ranks in views on platforms like Twitch or YouTube compared to other games, Warzone 2 is starting to die. And I'm not saying that Warzone 2 isn't fun, but the gameplay just hasn't been as exciting for a lot of people, including myself. It's incredibly rare to see a clip or play where you say, wow, that was insane. For example, this was one of my most memorable clutches on Rebirth Island. He's, he's no. pushing me. I don't have a single clip that comes anywhere close to that in Warzone 2 in terms of wow factor or how excited I was. Often one of the qualities that makes video games so incredibly addicting is that feeling of always wanting to improve. In Warzone 1, the movement really wasn't that complicated. It was just sliding and jumping. But because of the speed and fluidity of these movements, the combinations of how you use these against your opponents were endless. Even myself, a full-time content creator who on average played Warzone for four to five hours a day, 
I still feel like I could always improve my movement skills. The longer and slower time to kill also made it so accuracy was even more important. And with a slightly weaker aim assist in Warzone 1 compared to 2, you could always improve your aim. And this feeling of always having room for improvement is what drove players to keep wanting more. Contrasted to a fast TTK and very strong aim assist on Warzone 2, and it really just comes down to who shoots first wins the fight. The recoil patterns are also a lot different on Warzone 1. I actually felt like I had to control recoil more on Warzone 1. However, there's much less visual recoil and it's also much more predictable. Compared to Warzone 2 where recoil itself feels lower, but with more screen shake and more visual recoil and more randomness, especially at long range. But put things like movement and time to kill aside, the thing that felt the most noticeable and different about going back to playing Caldera on Warzone 1 was that the game just functioned properly. The servers run smoothly. In my four hour gaming session on Caldera, I didn't notice one hitch or lag spike. Whereas on Warzone 2, I can't go a single game without at least one major stutter and many gunfights feel like luck on whether or not your bullets register before your enemies do. The UI and menus are easy to navigate and function accordingly. Buy stations are plentiful, fast, responsive, and simple. Looting is astronomically easier and less complicated since the loot floats above the ground in Warzone 1. Now I would say that the loot in Warzone 2 looks cooler and more realistic, but it doesn't function nearly as well as it does in the original. And personally, I feel like the strive for realism is what has done some of the most harm to the Call of Duty franchise. Call of Duty has always been an arcade shooter. It's been made to look realistic, but it was never designed to play realistic like a mill sim style game, such as something like Escape from Tarkov. Except the one thing that is incredibly unrealistic about Warzone 2 is the fact that a 50 caliber bullet from a sniper to the head doesn't down an opponent in one bullet. And this change has single-handedly destroyed the sniper community that used to exist in Warzone. So what was so unexpected about myself playing Caldera? Simple. The game mode that I used to despise and hate was actually an insane amount of fun and it felt nothing like Warzone 2 does. Now for those watching, I hope that this doesn't come across as myself being some entitled streamer complaining about a video game. I realize that I am incredibly fortunate and blessed to be in the position where I am, but I also realize that a vast majority of my own community and many others throughout the Call of Duty community have fallen out of love with the game. So what's the solution? You've probably heard many streamers complain about Warzone and offer no real constructive criticism besides saying fix the game. It's important to realize that the huge changes in Warzone 2 did bring in a lot of new people to the game or perhaps brought old players back who gave up on the game previously because of how fast paced, competitive and sweaty Warzone had gotten. There's two different routes that I believe could so called save Warzone, but also make as many people as possible possible happy. Here's my first option. To put things simply, the game mechanics for battle royale and resurgence modes in Warzone 2 need to be adjusted to be much more similar to Warzone 1, with the exception of a few changes. First, slide canceling should be removed. Personally, I loved slide canceling, but I realize it probably does more harm than good. Although it's easy to learn, it's very hard to actually master and use effectively in a gunfight. And to do so with a regular controller without paddles or additional buttons, and on on a default button layout is even harder. To be successful at slide canceling, you really need to either have a custom controller with paddles, or you need to learn how to play claw, or you need to completely change your button layout so that you can hit the buttons and move your analog stick at the same time. It's also terrible for your controller and can lead to it breaking much faster than it normally would. However, being able to slide and shoot at the same time and quickly start shooting after diving would be some great new additions. Also, a way to easily reset your tactical sprint would be nice too. This could be as simple as adding a stamina bar that recharges after tax sprinting. Second, they need to focus on adding new and unique features without changing the core of what made Warzone 1 so popular. This includes things like proximity chat, diving, the mantling system, different types of equipment or kill streaks, as long as they're properly balanced, new vehicles, and many more features that make the game feel fresh and exciting without reinventing the wheel. But what about the more casual player that loved the changes that came with Warzone 2. I think this is where DMZ comes in. Warzone 2 seems to have been made with a lot of its core mechanics and features centered around DMZ instead of Battle Royale. The current mechanics could remain to exist in DMZ with a slower and simplified movement system, faster time to kills, real 
realistic looting, and all the other current features in the game. For my limited time playing DMZ, it seems there is a massive amount of potential there, and they could really turn it into the next big extraction shooter like Escape from Tarkov, but a version that's friendly to console and controller players, and is also much easier to learn and play. This keeps Battle Royale and Resurgence similar to Warzone 1, offering a larger skill gap and more competitive play, especially when Warzone Ranked comes, but keeps DMZ for the more casual player and those looking to just get on, game, and relax. My second route is a bit different, but ultimately I actually think this would make the most people happy and could be the most successful route for Activision in terms of them making money as a business. Instead of changing Warzone 2, leave it the way it is. Obviously there's bugs and glitches that need ironed out, but the core mechanics can remain. But here's where things get interesting. What if one of the many dev teams of the Call of Duty franchise franchise, probably Raven Software, who has traditionally led Warzone, was designated to bring Warzone 1 servers back fully online, including Rebirth Island and Fortune's Keep. Allow that dev studio to keep updating Warzone 1 like it was previously, with new guns and features each season, and likely once a year a new map for Battle Royale and Resurgence. Now for this method to be truly successful, I think it would be important that new maps and a very large pool of new weapons were added to the game very soon to keep things fresh, so they would have to go all in on this method and not just turn it back on and leave it the way it is. So essentially you would have an updated Warzone 1 and Warzone 2 would both coexist at the same time, ran by separate studios, each catering to a very different audience. Now I don't know the logistics of this, but the way Activision has operated in the past, I just don't see this happening. Although personally, I feel like this route would have the most potential to make them more money and it would cast the largest net on its potential audience of gamers because at the end of the day, you have to realize this is a business. But as gamers, the best we can do is voice our opinions in a constructive manner and hope it's heard by the developers. I still plan on playing and creating content in Warzone 2 and am really hoping for some fresh changes in Season 3. But I certainly see myself playing a lot more Caldera Warzone and maybe even creating content there too if things don't improve. The last thing I want to do is give up on the game that allowed me to go full-time in content creation and quit my full-time nursing job. But recently, I feel like Call of Duty has given up on the community that helped build Warzone 1. I'd love to hear your guys' thoughts about all this, hopefully in a constructive and civilized manner though. Thanks for watching guys, and thank you for allowing me to do what I do. I am incredibly thankful for it. I'll leave you guys to watch the end of this game, which was actually my first game on Caldera in months, and it ended with a classic T-Captain X gas clutch. He just... Wait, he just... Ooh, I gotta be careful because I am out of plates and I dropped my play box from earlier. Yeah, I swear it. Shoot. Shoot, 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 shoot. I can get wild here and, and wide rotate though. And then maybe even hit this portable buy. Let's go, boys. Oh, look at the gas clutches. I miss them so much, guys. I missed it so much. <laughs> oh, you, you can't do that in Warzone 2.